Hello everyone, how are you doing? It's Jordan here. Now today we've got a review of Star Melody, You Made Me Dreamer. This review was written by the lovely Katie Pajamas, not myself because I definitely did not wish I was a magical girl back in the day. Yes, these are her words, not mine. Please go follow her on Twitter. Let's see what she thinks of Star Melody, You Made Me Dreamer. Magical girls are one of the most entertaining subgenres of Japanese media that I constantly wished was a reality when I was younger. I can't think of a time when a lot of people didn't wish they were gifted with special abilities of some kind, and I spent more than a few afternoons with my friends fantasizing about having magical powers, wearing cute and colorful costumes, and pretending to fight otherworldly monsters to save the planet, all from the comfort of my backyard. Revisiting those memories was easy while playing Star Melody, You Made Me Dreamer, an experience that embodies all the cuteness and fantasy of magical girls in visual novel form and wraps it into a small, multi-chapter format. Developed by Kogado Studio and published by Dekiga, it holds within some charm, a touch of romance and a few surprisingly darker undertones. It was given an Asian English physical release over on Play Asia. links are below if you want to import that and support us at the same time, but the question is, is it worth playing as well as owning? The story revolves around a young male protagonist named Kanato, who lives directly next door to his best friend Yumemi. They both live very average day-to-day -day lives and continue to do so until a mysterious sleeping illness starts to befall people around town, and there's whispers of monster sightings to go along with it. Yumemi, while trying to sleep one night, is attacked by one of these monsters and is saved by her stuffed toy that comes to life to scare it away. It turns out that her stuffed rabbit didn't just spontaneously become sentient, but is instead taken over by Kirara, a lost soul of a princess from another world who is now inhabiting Yumemi's stuffed rabbit to hide from the monsters that are hunting her down. It turns out that these monsters are called Mumas, and invade the dreams of the sleeping to devour their souls. This explains the cause of the sleeping illness around town, where people are doomed to sleep forever, as their souls have been consumed by the Mumas. Kirara explains that she is on the run to prevent the same happening to her and requires the assistance of both Kanato and Yumemi to remove these Mumas and purify them to prevent them from returning. To do so, she blesses Yumemi with the ability to transform into Dreamer form to battle, then gifts her with the Star Stella that allows her to perform a purifying melody to defeat the monsters and protect the city. Kanato is also given a stellar fort, basically a kitar to play during battle and assist in protecting Yumemi. This sets the stage for the rest of the game and gives a reliable chapter format to follow. Every chapter consists of the same setup. You get some story exposition, at least one or two battles, and almost always a rhythm minigame before it closes. As you progress, you'll be introduced to two other main characters, Ayumu and Suzune, as well as two other lost souls that are related to Kirara, who will ultimately join Yumemi in battle as dreamers and assist in taking down both monsters as well as their creators, the Nightmare Origins. The story is broken up into nine main story chapters and then three additional chapters that follow each character, making three routes in total for each main girl character. There's also one final special date episode that unlocks after completing all the other routes. While there is what I would consider a technical true route, there is no particular order that the routes are required to be played in. The final three chapters that focus on one route are where the games seem to shine the most, as the stories were touching, the characters get a chance to stand out. Out of the three main characters, Suzune gets the best written story with an emotional character arc through both the main and her personal route. In addition to the main cast, there are also several side characters that play small roles during the main story and are more prominently featured later during some of the character routes, but outside of that, they don't get too much screen time throughout the game. As it is with some visual novels, outside of just the story and the choices, there's also some fun gameplay mechanics tossed in. Star Melody features both turn-based battles as well as rhythm game sections to break up the chapters. While both do stand to add some fun to the rest of the game, they are not without their flaws. The turn-based battles lack a lot of challenge and seem more a chore than add anything to the gameplay. There's very little to them to set them apart as anything more than something to be button mashed through. You start off with one character engaging in combat from the start of the game. As you begin each battle, you're given 3 SP that determines how much you can spend on moves per turn. As you gain additional characters to fight with throughout the story, this SP is shared and you must choose how to spend them on each character. This may cause some characters 
to not even get a turn depending on which move you choose to utilize. Each character does have several moves to choose from, standard attack, guard, charge up, special attack and super attack. However, I found all of the enemies that you fight during the game could be killed easily by simply using the standard attacks for each character during the battle. You can also use the special or super to knock them out faster, but based on the lack of challenge, this isn't even necessary. You also receive a new Stella every time you defeat a monster in-game that can be selected and used during future battles. However, I didn't notice that this changed either the moves or the damage dealt and only seemed to serve as a cosmetic item rather than adding anything to the gameplay. The rhythm game, however, does present a little bit of more challenge. You can select the difficulty you'd like it to be at the in-game menu and even choose to have it autoplay if you're not interested in going through it. The difficulty does seem to step up between different options, with medium difficulty feeling a lot more tense than easy. I did find this mechanic to be a lot more enjoyable since I'm a sucker for a good rhythm game. The songs are catchy and don't last too long, so it doesn't take away from the actual game too much. I do wish that there was a greater variety of songs, as there are only two during the main story that are included in this mechanic. However, on the in-game menu, you can play through a couple of additional songs that aren't included during normal gameplay. Out of the two additional gameplay items added, this one was the definite improvement above the turn-based JRPG mechanics. Outside of the already mentioned lack of a real challenge in the turn-based sections, I also found that the game overall to feel a little bit bland in its presentation. The characters don't stand out much in design and come across as rather forgettable. I also found the main protagonist, Kanato, to feel incredibly boring. While the three main featured girls and even the side characters seem to feel a lot brighter and more interesting than he did. It feels like a shame, really, as one of the girl characters is supposed to have romantic feelings for him, but he has all the personality of a piece of paper, and it's difficult to find her feelings relatable or believable as a result. But I guess there is someone for everyone, even someone that felt as dull as Kanato did. Overall, albeit as short and simple as the game ended up being, it does check all the magical girl boxes that you might be looking for in that genre. The game doesn't stand out much in a visual novel, either in story or presentation, but does stand out as one that comes along with some additional gameplay in the form of disappointing turn-based battles and a fun rhythm game. Outside of that, it's got an okay story to it with a set of acceptable characters and some surprisingly poignant moments, but isn't something I would say should take priority over a lot of the other visual novels currently available. It's just one of those games that I finished up and felt like I was wanting more. A 6 out of 10. Alright, thanks so much to Katie Pajamas for writing this, please go follow her on Twitter. If you want to purchase this physically on the Nintendo Switch, then check out the links in the description to buy an Asian English version that you can keep for yours forever, and support VN Paradise at the same time. Please go check out some of our other stuff, we've got a lot of other content that you may enjoy. Take care.